Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, Lake Diamonds. We are back. Got four of us here. If you're watching this on the tube, YouTube that is, you'll see our beautiful little faces. Long, scraggly, scruffy hair and scruffy beards, except for Mark. Mark, can you show us what happened? When you... <laughs> oh. I was making sure everyone could fly home safely. <laughs> That is brutal. Anyone else have any uh, any bad stories in terms of trying to cut your own hair? <laughs> yeah, come on, Wyatt. Throw yeah. it out. I had a little bit of a, a home style haircut that didn't go over very well. I'll show it for the camera. It's a nice <laughs> That's Pretty a nice fade. Nice fade. Yeah, it's great. You know what his hairstyle reminds me of on the back was the Dumb and Dumber segment. <laughs> <laughs> you know what his, what his bangs are oh. all jacked up. Call him a pumpkin by haircutted freak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you old pumpkin by haircutted freak. Well, this movie. And, um, and for those for those listening to, uh, just you know, Mark's uh, Mark has a nice runway. Um, uh, I, I guess the guard the guard came up as he was doing a cut and uh, and carved a nice uh, <laughs> nice nice runway right on the side of his head, like the perfectly wrong spot. You like you can't. You can't really fix that. There's so, no so hide that at church, I can promise. <laughs> All right, and I'm over here on the other screen trying to go live on the Facebook. We'll see how that goes. And if you're joining us or listening in and you're not on Facebook, we are going to be talking about bladed jigs, bladed lures, spinner baits. We did a podcast with Captain Ronnie, I guess it was a week or so, a couple weeks ago now, I guess it was, and it was talking about how to catch redfish and speckled trout in, in very murky water areas like Carolinas and Georgia and uh, Texas, Louisiana, and he talked about how much, even though he loves paddle tail and uh, everyone loves the slam shady, he says, you know, one of his go-tos is using a, a spinnerbait uh for for redfish so we're going to talk about that when to use and when not to use the different types the best types best colors uh best type of blades and we got of course our boy mark on here who is uh you know an ex-bass fisherman we don't blame him for that but uh the dude has has probably tossed more spinner baits than any of us here combined so yeah and, and two growing up in texas and louisiana so i'm very familiar with that muddy mississippi you know river delta style of fishery and um i'll tell you it was it was a big bait back home all right sorry you guys keep talking why i try to stream this bad boy on the facebook so we can get some questions we missed the questions last time and uh, we're missing tony too if you guys are wondering where Tony is and introduce you guys introduce yourself because uh you know I, I keep forgetting I see you guys but a big chunk of people listening to the podcast can't even see your your mugs or your horrible horrible haircut fade Wyatt and Mark goodness I'll go first that uh, my name's Wyatt I'm the insider club director here at Salt Strong I'm also the coach for the upper east coast here in North Carolina uh, I have done some stuff down in South Carolina as well so I'm excited to talk about these bladed baits today uh, they're a pretty big staple here in North Carolina so excited to uh, to share some information with y'all Marky Mark Good. yeah my name is Mark Gutson uh, one of the new uh, actually the newest employee uh, here at Salt Strong um got many titles but you know i'd like to just call myself a problem solver and um pretty pretty versed in uh many 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 tactics so strong on the freshwater side but uh fortunate enough to to fish the entire southeast on a very regular basis growing up uh, so from texas all the way to to the carolinas where where my family come from and um so got a, got a lot of knowledge in those waters and, and you, you mentioned putting out fires. So those of you just joining, this is Tackle Tuesday. We're talking about blades. And I ain't talking about the blade that messed up Mark's hair. I'm talking about spinner <laughs> blades. And Mark is actually at Southeastern Tackle. So those of you insiders and the public, because now our shop page is public to everyone, we added, I don't know, five or 6,000 new products overnight with new ones being added constantly. And we knew we were going to sell a lot because our insider members get 20% off. And all of a sudden, you start talking about 20% off, you know, uh, Shimano reel, Daiwa reel, pin reels, rods, sunglasses. I mean, some, some high ticket items. And we saw $800, $900 orders coming in. 
And next thing you know, it's like, how, how much Luke, like 20 something thousand dollars of tackle we sold in just a couple of days. And as you can imagine, it's just like, that's chaos for inventory management. So Mark actually drove back into Southeastern, even though, you know, he's full-time here at Salt Strong, just to help them out. He's going to be getting on the phone with some people and uh, some of our customers and putting out a couple fires and just making sure we have the inventory in hand. So thank you all so much that, that have ordered. I know I personally ordered stuff and including these uh, live target fleeing shrimp. Uh, these things look so realistic. It, I don't know if this is one of those baits that's going to catch more fishermen than fish, but it suckered me in and I had to buy it. Uh, but man, I got my stuff in uh, just what, two business days. So uh, that was impressive. Yeah. yeah I'll be, I'll be doing the test the shrimp. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, so there's, you know, there's still some hurdles. So, you know, I just ask for, you know, a little bit of patience, but no, I'm here to, to help streamline some things. And I'm telling you, I want to make y'all's shopping experience flawless and, uh, and I'll make sure that I get it done. Yeah. And, and with all these extra lures, too, we'll be doing a lot of reviews like that, that uh, fleeing shrimp, I'll be doing a test on that versus gulp shrimp. You know, one is, uh, is very pricey, looks very real. The other one's not nearly as pricey, has very good scent, and I'll be curious to see which one wins. So we'll be, we'll, long story short, we'll be doing a lot of reviews and just giving you the facts on what's working, what's not, you know, how to make the best and, and, and smartest decisions with your tackle. So, uh, so yeah, for this one, we're just talking about the bladed, the bladed jigs. Uh, so I think we should dive on in. Who wants to go first? I'm probably not the best. I don't use them very often. Uh, I'll explain my reasons why later. But uh, who, Mark, you probably use them more than anybody? Yeah, so, you know, on the saltwater side, you know, the biggest thing growing up in Texas and Louisiana, that, that, that silty, you know, Mississippi River Delta area, um, I'll tell you, you can't see your hand in front of your face. So, you know, a lot of the fish, the strikes that we got were, were based on, you know, the vibration that the lures were putting into the water. Um, you know, but I truthfully think that, you know, and everyone can kind of attest to this, especially that, that, that fish in the Texas and Louisiana water, um, you know, we all have caught fish on a bladed bait, but for some reason, you know, we, we hang it back up. We know it, 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 it's not really a regular, you know, bait in the arsenal. And, and, you know, so first question is, you know, you know, why isn't it part of the arsenal? You know, it's, it's one of those baits that, that are considered to be a great search bait. Um, you know, the unique thing about the Texas and Louisiana fishery is you can see the fish, you know, tailing in that silt stream that those fish, you know, kind of kick up. You know, it's a, it's a very easy method to target and to catch fish on a very consistent basis. It's not like you're blind casting. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what, you know, the... The, the customer base and the, and, the, and the audience that's listening, I'm, I'm curious to see why the bait's not used more widely. Well, you fished, you know, a lot of tournaments on the bass side. When, when did you use it in the bass world? When was that your go-to bait? You know, see, the thing about tournament fishing, and, and, and Luke can understand this as well because he's starting to do the big tournament stuff on the saltwater side. You know, to us in the tournament world, it's about the hookup ratio. OK, so am I going to use a large soft plastic bait that a big meat hook style of hook has to penetrate through all that plastic to penetrate into the fish? So what you're going to see a lot of tournament anglers use is a lot of exposed hook style baits to get that hookup ratio to its highest level, because if you're in a tournament and you only get 10 bites, those 10 fish that, that bite, they, they have to touch the boat side, okay? And, and that's why, you know, the bladed jigs, you know, the swim jigs, um, you know, the, the jackhammers, all the different chatter baits that are out there on the market, that's why they're so popular is you can cover water, but it's more so about the hookup ratio. Yeah, and, and also the, I, I'll go on with that, the hookup ratio combined with the weedlessness, so the, the snag, snagless ratio, and spinnerbait, like traditional spinnerbaits, are surprisingly weedless, even though they do have that exposed hook. The fact that spinner is up above it, it's doing all the churning, and it's basically, it's basically moving the hook point away from structure. Um, so that's, that's, that's the reason why I do like it. The reason I don't use them hardly ever is uh, I'm fishing more more clear water in many cases. Like I use spinners once the water gets all, all muddy and chalky, where you really need that vibration for the fish to, 
to find the lure. In, in many cases, what I found trying spinners in clear water is that it's just too much. Like it's almost like, uh, you know, if you're out camping or whatever, and like a, in the middle of the night, there's no wind or anything, and like a, a little lizard or, or a squirrel will be walking and it sounds like a bear. You know, it's just like, it's just unnaturally loud. Um, so for the clear water, I don't use it nearly as much. I kind of have it stored away. I have all mine stored away with popping corks, which I think is the same, same boat. It's, it's just like too much noise for, for clear, calm water. But when the water gets all nasty and dark and murky, that, or am I fishing you know, different areas, that's when, I, that's when I use it most often. So Luke, Slam Shady versus Spinnerbait. Well, I mean, so, I mean again, here, Slam Shady, they, all day long, but... Slam Shady versus Spinnerbait with Slam Shady on the Spinnerbait. Well, oh, mind blown, mind blown. <laughs> And you watch, you you wait, Luke. I'm gonna have that Slam Shady 2.0 on the back of one of my chatter baits, and I'm going bass fishing this week. I'm telling you, it's a it's a killer. You know, of course, it's a great standalone bait, but people don't realize how how awesome a Slam Shady is as a trailer to a bait. We've we've seen some pretty big fish caught with it all, already, both fresh and salt water. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for those who, who didn't get that reference, that was uh, that was an old school Saturday Night Live skit with uh, with Chris Farley. The Bears, Mike Ditka, Ditka versus a hurricane. Who wins? <laughs> Ditka. All right. What if the hurricane's name is Hurricane Ditka? <laughs> uh, no contest. He had one of his four heart attacks of the of the thing. So, and, and also for those who don't know, so that we're now live on Facebook too. So leave a comment. So I saw uh, Zachary said you use a spinner, a spinner blade with Z-Man uh, jig head and a paddle tail, which is kind of what we were just talking about. Um, yeah, just let us know what kind of, um, what spinner blade you're using. Is it a Redfish Magic? Like that's what I've used most often, but I've also used my old, um, my old spinner bait from bass fishing. Like the Hank Parker ones, like it, it seems like all those work pretty well. I haven't. I haven't done enough. I'm I'm curious on people's thoughts on the the leaf versus the what are the what are the blades called? Like the thin one versus the fat one. I was I already forgot the yeah, term. So they have the willow leaf. They have Colorado blades. They I mean there's so many different blade designs, um, and I think that all of them have kind of their their niche what they do well. You know that willow leaf is really really made if you're going to pull the bait through the water column in a faster pace. So there's less you know water you know pull on that product um, and then when you really want it to slow down and really put a lot of flash and vibration in the water that's where the Colorado blade shines so let's let's talk about the top selling one and we'll start from there and talk about the different blade designs so what's in terms of salt water which is the majority of our audience we'll, we'll talk about maybe some ditch pickle stuff later what what is the number one top selling is it that is it the strike king the, the redfish magic is that the top one yeah, I, I would say the Redfish Magic was probably the, the biggest out there. And Z-Man even had some, some really, really good saltwater chatterbait style of baits. Um, but I think it's, it's really, in our industry, the first one to the dance really gets the, all the recognition. And I think that that's where the Redfish Magic really, really cornered a market for quite some time because they were kind of like the first big name to do it. Even though that there were many baits well before that, it's just they were the... The, the quote unquote the yeti of the business at that time that had that name and what blade do they use traditionally um, so the majority of their stuff is going to be a, a a big colorado blade like a real big fat single blade and what and zachary responded back so he used the redfish magic but it sounds like he, he puts a different blade on he uses the willow or, um, or or maple leaf so you can customize the blades is the cool thing you get a bunch of different ones and it's just on a split ring so you just quickly change them change them as you need and the redfish magic has one blade option and then like you can go to walmart and get all sorts of two blade options if you want even more vibration oh two uh, blades Woo. yeah double trouble man so talk, let, talk about these blades maple leaf willow what's the difference between all these suckers i, I know what the colorado is on the traditional redfish magic yeah, just a different stamp design. So the willow leaf is just going to be a, a a lean, you know, long, skinny style of blade to to be able to 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 be fished at a faster pace. 
you know, so if you're really chunking and wanting cover and water, you know, that's, that's kind of the blade that's 90% of the industry. Um, and then the big fat Colorado blade, I mean, that's old school. That, that, that's, that's stuff that was used in the 80s, 90s, you know, that kind of a style of blade. Um, so, you know, just kind of a, the new setup is, is, is the willow leaf industry, you know, and, and some of the new, you know, trout magics, um, some of the hook manufacturers are even getting into the game. So I don't know if Wyatt up in his market in North Carolina, if he's seen any of the owner hooks that have that, you know, the big blade hanging from the bottom shank of the hook. So they're getting into that market of, of that flashy presentation. So if you like the Slam Shady as a soft plastic, but want to add that flash, some of these new processes that are coming out with like the owner beast hooks that have the flasher on the bottom, you know, they're getting into that belated market now. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm definitely seeing a lot of those hooks in our tackle shops. I mean, the redfish magics and the trout magics, they have their own complete section in our tackle shops. They're a huge staple of fishing in this dirty water in the Carolinas. I've used both and me personally, I'm not a fan of the Redfish Magic. I think the blade is a little too big. Uh, in the situations I'm fishing, I'm usually in back creeks in my kayak. Uh, there's not a lot of wind, very calm conditions. And that big, I believe it's the Colorado blade, that really fat one, it just causes too much commotion, like Luke said. I'm a bigger fan of the Trout Magic. I've had a little bit more success there. Um, and I have seen those hooks that do have the blade on them. And I believe that's the Willow Blade, that skinnier one there on those, those hooks from owner. I, I'm looking forward to trying those. Haven't gotten those a shot yet, but uh, I know that I've been wanting to attach it. And this is one of the lures that we uh, have on our shop. There's a little, and a lot of other lures have this as well. Big swim baits that are pre-rigged have this piece right down here. And like Luke was saying, you can take your split ring pliers and apply uh, any of these blades to that little attachment. You can put it on a, a slam shady. You can put it on any of these other pre-rigged baits. Um, and I really believe that in overcast conditions, uh, I don't like to fish the, the spinner baits that have the big flash on them during really sunny days. It's almost like fishing a gold spoon. I don't like fishing really flashy spinner blades in really sunny conditions. Overcast seems to work a little bit better. Um, that's when I've had the best luck with the trout magics. Um, and again, I'm just fishing those. I actually pulled <laughs> the trout magic, uh, the pre-rigged one off and I take a little bit, a little slam shady, put a little bit of super glue, stick it right back on the jig head. I prefer the, the, the Z-Man soft plastic. Uh, and I, I believe it's Strike King that makes the, uh, the redfish and the trout magics. I, I just prefer the, the Z-Man soft plastic to the, the Strike King soft plastic. So that's what I've been doing and I've had pretty good success with those. So for those listening, Wyatt, who are maybe new to the blade, industry what's the difference between redfish magic and trout magic so the redfish magic uh it's going to have the exact same jig head exact same soft plastic the only difference is the redfish magic is going to have a much larger blade on it it's going to be fatter uh, it's not going to be as long in length but in width wise it's going to be two three times as wide it's a really fat blade um, that sits on one of those v swivels mark you might i'm not exactly sure what that's called but it's that traditional spinner bait um, it just sits in, it sits above the bait. So it's not attached to the jig head itself. It sits on like a V style rig. And the same thing with the trout magic, um, except the blade on the trout magic is a very skinny, um, the willow leaf. It's, it's probably two inches long if that, and maybe half an inch in width while the, while the, the redfish magic is probably an inch, um, in width, a lot fatter. Yeah, and we had a we had a question come in from uh, from Kevin uh, mentioned about you know uh, using those in shallow water. Um, what about deeper water? He fishes Galveston Bay, so dirty water. Um, what about water like eight to ten feet? So I've actually fished that same area that he's inquiring about Galveston Bay. I've, I've gone all the way from San Jacinto all the way down to the dike area. You know, to me, that's that that was the beauty of the advent with the braid industry that allowed us to fish these, these, you know, half ounce bladed baits deeper. Okay. So that braid allowed that bait to get into that six, eight foot of water. Um, so to me in his area, because the water there is dirty, um, and there's a lot of chop on that water that he's fishing, that vibration really helped us catch fish. So, you know, yeah, I agree with what, what most of y'all are saying to a degree because freshwater is its own little, is its own animal. Um, you know, this is an early morning 
kind of a technique for me on salt water. It's a lower light condition. It's an overcast condition. It's a windy condition style of a setup. Um, you know, they make them in two different sizes and weights. You know, a lot of the baits are going to be in that quarter or a three eighths ounce base, and then they'll have a heavier version in that half ounce base. So that's going to help you get deeper into that water column. But as you know, Luke, when you throw a blade on a bait, you know, that bait's going to naturally rise to the surface as you're cranking. It kind of gives it that rudder that will drive that base to, you know, that, that bait to the, to the surface. So a slow, steady retrieve to get it down in the depth, you got to use braid, you got to use lighter braid to really cut that water column a little better. Yeah, and, and just weigh it down, right? If you're using, uh, going after four feet of water and you usually have a quarter ounce jig head, you probably should double it if you're gonna have one of those big Colorado blades or slow your retrieve down. Um, and so we have one question, Todd, about jig heads. Todd asked about uh, best jig heads for holding the slam shady or the best weedless hooks to use. So I've just used a Z-Man trout eye uh, jig heads. Those things have been awesome. Even the weedless ones are solid. Um, as far as weedless hooks, um, I like owner twist locks for fishing everything. Like if I'm going to switch a bunch of brands, but if I'm only using Z-Man, those grip pins are hard to beat. Those, um, they don't, I don't like grip pins for non-Z-Man, but I really like them for Z-Man. And there's, we have a review on that one as well. And more questions came in. Uh, or Lee, Lee said that the, uh, the Colorado blade uh, works well in clear water as well. So uh, I, again, I'm not saying it doesn't work at all. I just, I find that I gravitate towards non uh, non blade, but that seems like a good experiment that I need to do. Oh. Slam shady on a redfish magic versus slam shady on a normal jig head. That'll be fun. And and I you know I think one thing that we've hammered on before, but it's worth repeating. The 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 day that we became really consistent, especially you, Luke, because you did it first, was just going out with one lure and saying, "I'm going to master this." And that's one of the the big things we see a lot with our insider club. We get some really experienced. We get full time guides that join our insider club because like, man, I've been fishing live bait for 15 years. It's all I do with my customers. I, I really want to master lures. And that's the first thing we tell them is, is get one that you're pretty confident with and make it your confidence bait. You know, we fished with Mike Iaconelli. I don't know if you noticed this because I was in the back, you were in the front of the troll motor and Mike was kind of in the middle, really all over the place. I was uh, jumping all, all over the boat. But I noticed every time we tried a new little area, he kept going back to the exact, and I won't reveal his confidence bait, but he always started with the same thing. Like every single time he'd start with the same thing. And if that wasn't working, then he might try it up. You and I pretty much stuck with the same thing the whole day. And, and we caught a, a big chunk of the, the fish that day against a guy who's probably one of the, the best, especially if he's going out and just doing searching for new air. Because that was a question that came in from uh, that Philly boy. What's up, man? And he's in Naples, which is a really clear water area. And I would say something like a slam shady in terms of just covering ground. Because uh, this question was, I have no butter kayak. What's the best search bait? I don't think it's a spinner bait. Mark, you might disagree. But I, if I can only pick one, I would just go with uh, with a paddle tail on a, on a jig head. If, yeah, if, I was, if I was in South Florida. Now, if I was in Texas, where I lived for four years, and I know you, you were you know, born there and, and fished a lot there, Mark, I, I might try something different. Probably not. Uh, just because it's my confidence bait and I put so much time with it uh, on the water, but I would definitely go with the paddle tail. Yeah, and, and Naples isn't always clear. A lot of times it's real milky. Uh, I fish down there pretty pretty frequently, and if you go way back in the back country, it even gets um, real like tannic. And and I, I went up there with uh, uh, Justin Napier. Uh, he's one of our members. Just a really just a great great guy and great fisherman. And we went. We were targeting you know snook and tarpon, uh, but we started up kind of in like the midwaters and went way back into the backwaters into like really super thin creeks with with pretty dark water and the paddle tail just a slam I had the slam shade on jig head and it worked great for all of them um so it, for that area I would highly recommend uh, just a paddle tail on a jig head without the blade but if you like blades it, it'll still catch some fish so what what's up with these owner hooks I haven't even used them yet it, this is the one that's like the blades at the very bottom is that what you're yeah. talking about yeah, it's like mounted to the hook. I actually have one. Let me see if I can find one. I have one here somewhere. Yeah, so it's, it's that spinner style of willow leaf blade. Imagine just like the twist lock where the weight is kind of molded to the shank of the hook. 
they have this little swivel base that comes out of that lead that's poured on the shank that converts it to a spinner blade. Oh, so it's, it's more in the middle of the shank, not at the very bottom. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's the best way that I can explain it without showing. So, you know, that's that's the gig, you know. Uh, yeah, it depends on the brand. Strike King has their version, owner has their version. Uh, but it's going to be somewhere on the shank of that bottom of the hook. Have you used it yet, Wyatt? Have you tried it? I have not purchased one yet, but I have been wanting to. Uh, I've, I've just used the Trout Magic so far, but I know that they have the same blade, um, so I would assume it would work just Dude, as well. Otis, Otis just got up. He's he's interested now. I see. That's a. Uh, I I I think I've seen one that was more towards the bottom. That's pretty interesting. It's uh, yeah. They it's have a, they have a bunch of different versions. Like this one for the yeah, for those listening, this is a, a basically a weighted hook that has a blade mounted to it, like below the actual hook shank. And uh, again, that blade will just make a bunch of a bunch of a uh, bunch of action, and and then up top, it's like a, just a normal weighted hook. It almost looks like I mean, when you first pulled out, I thought that was the jig head, and then I was like, no, that's that's just the weight way up top with the twist lock. Is it the same twist lock as normal? Um, correct. Yeah, it's a twist lock. I mean, yeah, because I think owner has a patent to the twist lock, that, which is the only difference between a twist lock and a normal coil is the fact that it has that that uh, that centering pin at the top. So that's why you'll only see those centering pins on owner products. That's yeah, why and that like. weight, it, it creates like a little keel, you know, to kind of keep that bait kind of swimming at a natural profile. So that's another reason why owner built it that way is to help, you know, really allow that bait to swim at a very lineal, you know, swimming pattern. And check out this one. This is a huge one. Our position here. What you got? Um, what you got? What you got? And yeah, and that, that centering pin is why I like owners a lot because it does help to, to center that bait in. Um, <laughs> but it's is... still tough with Z-Mans. This is a giant <laughs> tarpon. So what are you going to rig on that? Like, like one of those like seven inch um, Z-Man paddle tails or something? Or? Yeah, this, this, this is for like a real fat, like a big fat um, soft plastic. Yeah, you need to put one of those big um, Hero Z the eel style baits for a z-man and go catch some big cobia with it yeah, yeah, yeah this, is a, this is an a dot hook that is a big old hook um, and for those so of now, you those of you wondering because we we hear a ton of questions i feel like i'm fielding them daily yes we are working with z-man closely i've been speaking with daniel who's the president uh multiple times this month and and we are bringing back the slam shady on on the z-man molds uh, we still have the five inch on our shop. I know we still have some five inch left. We had some four inches and we put, sent an email out to our insider members and they were gone in like 60 seconds, literally. Uh, they, they were gone in like an hour and a half and uh, we we're, we will get them back. They've been closed down. They are now, I think as of this week, have partially reopened where they're getting stuff out to you know people like us, to people like Southeastern where Mark is uh, right now at the tackle store. Uh, who we're who we're teaming up with, and so good news is they're coming back. Bad news is they were already way behind beforehand, and and now this pushed them back even more uh, because they've had no machines running. So we're we're looking at probably August realistically to have Slam Shady in in quite a few different molds, uh, including the three, which was the most popular, the, the four, the five, and we're hoping to get a couple uh, more as well. We'll keep you posted as we know more. We still have some 2.0s left, and of course. While we're talking about Tackle Tuesday, we got the Alabama Leprechaun coming really, really soon. That's one that we've been testing out, gosh, 10, 11 months now. And it's amazing how well that does in really shallow water, like three feet or less. Uh, it has been absolutely killing it. The, the type of area where I would probably not throw a, a blade since we're on the subject of blades. Uh, but man, that, that Silent But Deadly, we're calling the SBD Silent But Deadly series. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Alabama Leprechaun. So that's like the opposite spectrum of the yes. of these these blades, right? Stealth. Blades, you know, chalky water, commotion, you know, waves. SBD, the Silent Deadly, is up there sight fishing up in the flat, calm, clear shallows. Um, and check this out. I, I have a just. I've been getting a bunch of different different uh, things to try out. <laughs> so this is like the ultimate in in noise, right? So you have that you have a, a spinner bait that we've been talking about. This one has the the thinner blade. But also check this out. It has like a, a prop, a prop little uh, blade. And then you throw a paddle tail on uh, on yeah. the jig head. So it's called the uh, flashing swing blade. Oh man, that's a name like that is dangerous. And so that's the, owner makes that, huh? 
Yeah, that's one of the owner products. They have a lot of new things they've uh, they get out there, and this is one of them. Great. Yeah, Did you I, see I, the I, thing? Great for fresh salt water. <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on, owner. You hey, see hey, that, Luke? Luke, Luke read the I, front of I got, it. <laughs> I got a recommendation for you, Luke. I wouldn't cast that anywhere around your pretty hair because that looks like it'll just mow <laughs> mow the side of your bangs if you don't. Uh, if you I might, don't, I might, that might trim my mullet up a little bit. Mark, I'm Mark. Speaking back. of that, for the people who join late, can can you show us what happened real quick? A little uh, halftime break. Well, the, the the thing is, is I got to tell the the brief story. I contacted my barber. And I said, man, I, I'm getting I'm getting out of control here. I need some love. He said, nope, not touching anyone for another two months. I'm like, I, ca I can't do this. You know, the, the hair on the side of my head, it, it's starting to, to itch me because I don't like that much hair. I'm just going to shave my head to a lower setting with my my brand new shaver that I went out and bought. And then when my daughter gets home, she can touch it up and put a nice fade on the side for me. Well, as I was going with a with a number four, which is a which is a big blade, a number four, I'm starting to shave the side of my head, and on the third pass, I bend my ear down and go above my ear, and the guard falls off my razor and scalps the side of my head. <laughs> you see that, Vince? <laughs> I think everyone can see it. <laughs> so so needless to say i'm wearing a hat everywhere i go and um it, it is my first and my last opportunity to take care of my own head uh awesome. joy, the joys of being stuck at home with no place to get your hat cut you know it reminded me of the old fraternity days when you were the first one to pass out and they come in with a buzzer and take your eyebrows off you know, that, that, that's what it felt like on the side of my head when that thing fell off and I just I feel it digging into my scalp I'm like oh that's not going to be good and of course you don't just stop when you originally you have to bring it all the way up just to make sure that you really cause a lot of damage that was me what we used to like to do you know I, I went to Georgia Tech and right in downtown Atlanta what was even better is the the first guy in our fraternity that would pass out normally on a couch we would actually take the couch down the stairs and take it into like basically the downtown Atlanta area. Like we'd go as far in as we can and leave the couch right there on the sidewalk. And uh, yeah, looking back, probably not the, the safest thing to do. Do not try that at home kids. Uh, but man, we had some, uh, we had some good stories. And back then there was no real camera phones or any of this Instagram and what are the kids on? What's the other one? TikTok? man, that would have been trouble. It's amazing these fraternities all get kicked off campus. <laughs> all right, let's move back to Blades. Luke, you got any more? No, I mean, just like a bunch of different, like some smaller ones. Um, so this will probably be one that I that actually test out. This is a more realistic. So this is a, a thinner blade, a lighter jig head. This is, for, this is really for going up, though, I'd say, in the shallows. Um, oh, I'll tell you, it has that prop thing, too. <laughs> I don't know. I'll try it, but I'm not – I'm not very excited about it. All right. Has anyone caught one with like with on this thing with the blade and the prop and a paddle tail like the the trifecta? I don't think I mean this little prop thing won't do much. I think it'll just make it rise up in the water column a little bit more. It'll create a lot of drag. Like this is what will create the vibration. Like this thing spinning will be a ton of vibration. This is this is I think is probably a little bit more for for catching humans, catching humans eyeballs in the in the store shelves. This is this blade right here is what's going to actually enable the fish to feel it. But again, like I, I just am not. I've never been as consistent with using blade lures in in water that's more in the clear spectrum as I am with just a normal paddle tail and jig head. I feel like I can just fish those paddle tails faster. I can cover depth changes easier. Or I can go shallower, or more importantly, go deeper more easily without the blade. So for that reason, like I, I don't use blades very often. Have you caught a snook on a on one loop? No, never have. Um, but uh, but like my first time trying it, I was actually Joe and on March Madness. We uh, when we first started Salt Strong, we went down to Lou Gasparilla Island for for a month, the month of March, and uh, and I brought some of those out there to test it out. And like on my third cast, I caught like a twenty one inch trout. So I was blown away, and and so then I was like sold on it. But then the rest of the day, I didn't catch anything. <laughs> so, 
So, and then as soon as I switched over to a normal jerk bait, because we were fishing calm, clear water, I started to catch a bunch of fish again. And um, so I'm not saying they don't work. Uh, hopefully please, people don't misconstrue the fact that I don't, I don't, I do believe they will catch fish in clear water. I just don't think they will catch as many fish as easily as if using uh, more of a, just a, a normal jig head with a battle tail. Looks like Lee uh, Chaney says he has uh, definitely caught a snook on one of those. Joey says he's going to email you a picture of it. So uh, we've got that going for us. Another, another blade of bait we haven't talked about that I know is really popular down in the Gulf is those dart spins. I know one of our fishing coaches uses them really heavily. Uh, and I'm just now starting to see them come up uh, in our tackle shops up here. Have you guys used any of those dart spins? Uh, tell everyone what that is, Wyatt, for those listening who don't know what a dart spin is. So a dart spin looks a lot like, like a, this profile minus the lip. I don't have one with me, uh, but imagine you've got your treble hook right here in the middle. And instead of this third hook out here, it's a willow blade. So as you're pulling this bait through the water, and I believe it is a soft body bait, uh, you would just work it like a normal plug. You've got your treble hook here and then the, the bladed hook out here. I don't know. I think the only con I would see with that is fish that are striking at the end of a lure, maybe coming up and grabbing the end, like, such as a trout, um, might possibly miss that hook that's in the middle. But I've seen Wader Dave catch a lot of very serious fish on those, uh, those dart spins. They're really nice looking lures. And that, that's Patrick Seville's, right? That's the band of anglers? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on that. Mark? I think it is, um, you know, that's their new, their new company name, you know, after the whole spool tech buyout and all that stuff. So I'm almost positive you are correct. Yeah. I've got a couple. Luke, do you have one? I, th I think I gave you a dart spin. Yeah. I have some here somewhere. I'm trying to find it. I, uh, I can't find it, but, uh, it looks, it looks promising. I, I, to be honest, I haven't used it yet. I've, I've seen a ton of tarpon caught on it. They're, uh, you know, they'll throw it that there's three different sizes of that dart spin. And they'll throw, I don't know what the color was or if it even mattered, but uh, just slow retrieve. And I want to talk about retrieval speed uh, with spinner baits, but uh, just slow retrieve down in the keys. And they were killing the tarpon with it. Uh, they did that one video when, when Patrick first released it. And I was like, holy smokes, which I, I got a couple of them. And when I went to, oh, I see Luke holding one now. There it is. That's, so that's, um, that's the mid-sized one. Big one. Big boy. That's, no, there's a bigger one, right? There's like the nine or that's like a six inch probably yeah this is probably a six inch one and so here's like this here's the, be the size for more of like an inshore this is probably four maybe four and a half inches and so you can see it just has a, a blade that's just screwed into the back this is a, a pretty strong plastic uh, so i'll hyper, be testing hyper plastic luke hyper plastic yeah, sorry i don't have the right term but uh um but yeah so any other they're interesting baits um i'll be curious to see how they do again i'm I'm sure they work. It's just, do they work better than the alternatives? Luke, does that hook up top, can you slide it up like some of the chase baits ones or is it pre-rigged exposed? Oh, yep, there you go. Yeah, so it, it's actually unique too. I'll just put it over here so you can see that there's actually pretty big holes in there. And uh, so it's it's not pre-rigged, but it's it has, uh, it has grooves or holes formed where you need to rig it. So which is, which is actually pretty cool. So that way you're not, you don't have to like, put much thought into exactly where you mount it you just put the hook straight through the hole simple as that yeah the ones i've seen up here they have treble hooks instead of uh it might be a different company that's making them but they've got that same similar style i like the weedless hook version better it seems like it'd be more applicable for those areas yeah absolutely i i uh i, I really shy away from treble hooks altogether especially now we can't keep redfish snook or trout like most of the fish that i'm catching so why like why why harm the fish you can catch plenty of fish on single hooks so even my top waters, I, I replace all of them with single hooks. Um, so anyhow, yeah, I'll try, I'll try those out too. I'll be doing a ton of lure testing. So test coming soon. So I know it's got a blade on it and we're talking about blades. So would a spinner bait consider that part of the blade family that, or is it like kind of like when you have that cousin, you're really embarrassed by and you're like, yeah, that's really a third cousin. Uh, don't, don't really know him. I think we're related. <laughs> for, for for us dirty water guys you know that, that's a that's a thing of normalcy you know it's 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 luke that gets to, to fish in these pristine water areas of florida that uh you can drink uh the water quality you know some of us aren't privy to that kind of access 
Well, it's got down, it's got downsides too. You know, when you're when you're out there and you're in especially like paddleboard or something, and you really got to go number two. There ain't no hiding it. Uh. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hey, Luke. Uh, looks like a question came in from Cody Self, and I believe you would be the one to answer this. Have you used the DOA Terror Eyes lure? Uh, I do some. Um, I've I use them for tarpon. They're they're known for a good tarpon, but I still haven't caught one on it. But uh, but I I've heard they work, and I'm and I I trust that they do. I I personally I spend mo there for those who don't know terror eyes. They're a smaller profile bait. They have a, a an eye that's the weight, and it's uh, it dives deep. Like there's really no. It's it's the opposite of of this. Like there's no vibration. It's a it's a thin plastic. It does a little bit of wobble when you take it fast. But it's more of a it's more of a visual it's a it's a visual lure so I would only use it in, in more clear water like I know down in the keys they crush tarpon with them again that's clear water it's deeper water I fish a lot of clear water and, and moderate clear water but I fish mostly in less than like three feet of water um, and I I would not recommend terrorizing three feet of water it's more for like six feet or more because they dive down so fast they have no um, no water resistance so they're going to dive down fast they're going to stay down and they get um, caught in the grass really, like crazy remember cause there was yeah. that one it was like a summer where I, I did catch a couple of nice snook and jumped a few tarpon and i was like oh this is the next best thing and then i kept using it all the time and i now and i ended up just letting it rust out eventually yeah they'd be um, good for like dock fishing or fishing just deeper deeper structure um but uh but I, I just don't use it much because i'm most often fishing the shallows and when i'm fishing docks i, I just prefer to have the a, like a slam shady on a jig head because i can i can just get a different size jig head and in two seconds i'm i'm now covering the deeper water so uh so yes i do work i personally just don't use them very much all right let's go back to spinner i got a question that i saw came up a little while ago you mentioned the importance of, of braid. Are you using a leader at all? And, and let's just assume you're in, a, you know, dirty water in Texas or Carolinas or Georgia. Are you just going straight braid to the spinner, Mark? A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I don't ever, ever, ever use a leader material when I'm fishing a bladed bait. Um, again, a lot of these strikes are out of a reaction. I'm, I'm pulling this heavy vibration, you know, by their face and they're slamming the bait. Uh, but no, it's a it's a hundred percent braid to the to this lure source itself. And I'm chunking and winding. Yeah, and, and also a lot of times I still recommend, and, and I, when I fish in dark water, I, I use leaders in, in many cases, but I wouldn't on a spinner bait because I, I use the leaders um, for abrasion resistance. I've done some tests, you know, rubbing braid up against uh, sandpaper, like mimicking a, a snook's mouth or even a bass's mouth, and braid just disintegrates really fast when rubbed on a rough surface. So for that reason, I use leader even in dark water not for the visual benefit, but for the abrasion benefit. But when you're using a spinner, you have this big wire out there. So even when you have a fish that, unless it totally inhales, which I've never had a fish like inhale the entire V and everything, but like you really don't need a leader at all because the wire is going to protect your line. It's and you got, that cool, you got that cool propeller on there too. So yeah. Yeah. Here you have the cute, uh, the it's prop. A lip, lip stopper. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you could use lure. Like it wouldn't be terrible if you did, but you just don't have to. Well, I know that there's a lot of slippage when it comes to, to tying braid straight to an eye hook or a swivel. So Luke, you've done so much knot testing. Which knot would you use to secure your braided line to a spinner bait? Yeah, good question. Uh, and a question came in too about the Palomar knot for with braid. So a lot of people love the Palomar knot. Um, it's great for tying to hooks with mono or fluoro. I don't like for braid at all. It, yes, it does work, but I've done, I've done tests where I literally will tie it in under controlled tests and pull to see the breaking strength. Um, and it's not good. It's not good for braid. The best knot that I've seen for braid to terminal tackle is, um, I call it an in, a improved for braid uni knot. And it's basically uni knot, but instead of going around the hook eye once, you just do it twice. Instead of doing five wraps, do 10 wraps. So do the uni knot times two everything. Around the hook twice, 10 wraps instead of five. And that is a, it's a, it's an extremely strong knot. It will not pull out. No, it won't because I've got a rod over here that broke. You know, I had a double uni tied on. So 
you can see the pieces of it now that I've got to get a warranty on. That's not uh, what happened. Well, that I had a double uni tied. Uh, it was. Oh, I you're gonna bl it. you're gonna blame the knot that your rod broke. <laughs> yeah, I blame Luke. Honestly, it's Luke's <laughs> fault. He taught me too good of a knot, and uh, I was trying to free it from structure, and my rod broke before the uh, the knot did. So just uh, goes did bro it it broke in the truck door. Or what happened? No, it was. I was caught on. I was trying to find some sheep's head, and uh, unfortunately, those guys really like structure, and got hung up, and the knot was really strong. So trying to free it. It's a, it was a St. Croix rod, and I've had a couple of those break on me. But strong. Are they, are they good about? Are they good about uh, replacing them or fixing? What's what's the deal? They usually are, unfortunately, because of the virus. They're closed down right now. They're not accepting any rod returns. Wisconsin, which they're based out of, is uh, is shut down in terms. I didn't of, think Wisconsin had a single case. It's it, <laughs> it's their governor's call, not a not not St. Croix. I can tell they're upset about it as well. So I, I'm, as soon as it opens back up, I'll be sending it back for warranty. But look like it's a pretty easy process. Yeah, and in, in general, when a rod, rod breaks, Luke froze up on us. <laughs> it's a bad, another bad news about that clear water. And uh, you don't get as good. That, that reception doesn't go into those fancy buildings that, you know, that Luke is uh, a member of. <laughs> All right. Um, we did see a question here while Luke's frozen. Is it bad to tie my mainline Power Pro braid straight to the jig head? Knowing where you are, old Philly boy, in South Florida, I I would not personally do it. If you're catching, if you're going after inshore fish, anywhere in Florida, I, I and assuming you're using a jig head, not you know not what we're talking about here with with uh, spinner baits, I would certainly use some type of leader. Uh, do you guys agree, Mark and Wyatt? Hundred percent, I, I completely agree with that. Especially if it's not, uh, it looks like it's going straight to a jig head. So I'm guessing it's just regular paddle tail. I would definitely, definitely recommend leader. Although it's um, uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have read this book. It's what fish see, and it's by a, an eye, an actual eye doctor who is an avid fisherman and has you know kind of broken some records and stuff. And uh, I'm gonna do a whole kind of book report on it. It was absolutely fascinating. But, you know, he takes different lure and lure materials and colors underwater at different depths in different types of water clarity and shows what really happens. And, and this is like the scientific evidence why Slam Shady works. Like when you read it, you're like, I was like, oh, my gosh, like. Uh, yeah, Luke had read it, and that's the kinda... nexus. That's the nexus of Slam Shady. You know? That yes. was uh, I read that book a couple years ago. It, it is fascinating, and, and I mean, the main part is just talking about white of all the colors that that basically uh, adapt to the, whatever water you're fishing in. It is going to be white, and he's like, the worst thing that can happen is like you got some color. Let's just say it's red, and red looks like pitch black at certain depths and certain water water colors. And he's like, a fish might see it. 10, 15 feet away and it's coming in on and it's tracking it. And all of a sudden that thing completely changes colors, like goes from black to a bright fluorescent red. And he's like, that's why so many of them stop all of a sudden where white is kind of like always constant. Uh, it's really, really fascinating how it takes on whatever watercolor it, uh, it is. It is going to be the one that's least likely to ever change. And then he talks about the one thing you need is some kind of flash, like, you know, the gold or silver or something else that's bright. And it's a, uh, it's really fascinating. Uh, but also some other cool little colors that we'll be playing around with based on this. I mean, this is a guy who's dedicated years of taking stuff, you know, lures uh, and flies underwater to see what really happens, not just what it looks like in a tackle store. Uh, really, really fascinating book. Um, have you have you guys read that, Mark or Wyatt? I have not, but I'm definitely going to be ordering it. I know Luke told me a little bit about it, but uh, I probably need to read it myself. I have not either. <laughs> no. Yeah, well – Joe, we'll do it. Let's do a podcast on that now. That yeah. way, instead of because it's not it's not the fun, a fun read. Like it's it's like a it's a lot of facts, um, some stories obviously, but uh, we'll, we can do a podcast to just hammer yeah, out. Yeah, but the, this this is, dude. I mean, he's a doctor. He's a scientist. Like this is very scientific, uh, kind of like the scientific angler. But at least that has a lot of stories in it. Uh, but it, it's it's good. I mean, he shows real life, and I love the pictures. Right, everyone loves a book with pictures, not just for kids. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like that. Maybe we'll actually we'll call up old Dr. Kegiyama. Kegi, Kegiyama? Sorry, if you're listening, Dr. Kegiyama. We'll, uh, we'll reach out to you. That'd be cool to get him on a podcast. 
Oh yeah. All right. What hey, else uh, we got? What what we got? Wyatt on on blades. Anything else? Uh, well, I don't. I had a question come in that I think would be good to answer. We we did talk a lot about just leaving leader out of the equation, but I don't know if we covered why. Um, so Lee Lee asked if the leader is less abrasive than braid, why wouldn't you always use a leader? That's my, that's my, I totally agree. The only time I wouldn't is with like a spinner bait like this. I actually still would, I would still put like a, like a short leader, like an eight inch leader on it. But with using a spinner bait where there's that, that metal arm that's reaching out the odds of the fish, you know, the fish's mouth, which is generally what causes break offs touching the line itself is, is very small, but I still would prefer a little bit of leader just in case it gets around a piling or gets its nose down in some oysters, something like that. Um, because the, the, in mono leader as well, I don't use fluoro anymore. I use just regular mono and it's, it's outperformed fluoro and all the abrasion tests that I've done. So now I just use mono and, uh, and I really haven't seen a change in, in fish catching. So Mark, what about, Mark, what, what about yeah. to you, Mark? So that, I'm glad that you asked that, Wyatt, because I, I, I should have explained my rationale. Number one, growing up in Texas and Louisiana, I used a lot of bait casting reels. Because I used a lot of bait casting reels, I also threw very heavy braid. So I, I would very, very regularly throw 50-pound test braid. So where to, to catch a three pound fish, let's be clear. Okay. So three pound fish would be <laughs> my, my, my entry level, but keep in mind, Louisiana's got some hosses out there, you know? So when you're chunking 50 pound braid on a bait caster, you know, the braid on a bait caster, the, the, the bigger you go, the, you know, actual side of it is it will cast better than thinner diameter braid. So let me address that side first. I use big braid on bait casters. Um, but the second thing, the method of me finding fish, the what, you know, what I target as far as structure is I'm a grass fisherman, okay? I don't target a lot of rock. I don't target a lot of oyster beds. I'm a, I'm a chunk and wind style of fisherman because growing up in that, you know, that Galveston area all the way to South Louisiana, there's a lot of grass flat and muddy flat style of fisheries. So I don't have the cutoff, you know, on the, on that side to worry about needing a leader. Okay. Um, so, you know, two things that, you know, I wanted to address there um, to me, you know, I was always raised on two things. Number one, you always want to match the hatch. So the bait that you see in the water, you're going to try to mimic it the best way possible. And number two, you know, the, the less amount of ties on knots, that you can put into the water, the less opportunity to break off. So that's why I never use swivels. That's why I, I, I tried to do a lot of direct knot tying to a jig head or to a hook because of the style of fishing that I was doing. So I just tried to minimize the knots. Yeah, and, and even, and, and on the, uh, the reason why that thicker line, it works good with search, we'll call it a search bait, like a spinner bait is really a search bait. It's power fishing, it's moving fast. Like doing this underwater footage has been pretty eye-opening. I've, I've just been using paddle tails, but the same premise holds true. It's moving a lure fast. Those fish aren't like coming up to this direct side of it, like analyzing it. It's seeing it from a long distance off and they go around, they follow it. So they're coming straight from behind. They're not seeing the line at all. They're just seeing that paddle tail or whatever, or the blade. They're just seeing from the direct back. So you could probably use a hundred pound test line and it would still work just as good uh, for power baits, for power fishing. Totally changes when you're doing finesse stuff, but uh, but with with a spinner bait you can kind of use whatever you want or nothing at all. Um, I still prefer to use a little bit just for the fighting aspect because I like I use spinning tackle, and the lighter the line, the further I can cast. So I want to use as light line po as possible while still having a, a, some some extra beef on the business end. So I would I would still do like I'll do like a foot long leader or so. Foot long. What about line twist? I, I guess the, and the reasoning behind why I don't tie the, the leader on uh, to a spinner bait would be line twists with the, I'd, I'd always been told when I was a kid and then this could be true, could be not true. Maybe Mark, uh, Luke, you could shed some light on this. When you're using a spinner bait that wobbles and turns in the water a lot, are you going to be dealing with a lot of line twists when you're using monofilament or fluorocarbon? It, it won't, it, it'll, it'll wobble, but it won't, it won't helicopter. 
It should. Like I mean, a, a, spo- a spoon bait would, bait. but yeah, not a yeah. not a spinner bait. But yeah. the inline spinners might like they 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 make some of those things where it's a little spinner that is that is in line with the bait, and sometimes those do. But the traditional spinner, right? It has the blade up top, the the jig head down below. The jig head's the keel, right? And it, it will it will rarely it, if it'll only helicopter if something bad like something really wrong is happening with it. Um, otherwise, yeah, line twist. But for the inlines, maybe. For spinner baits, def or for spoons, definitely, but uh, not so much for for spinners. It's interesting the parenting advice you guys got. Geez, I thought you were gonna say Mark's like I was raised with two things. Uh, my parents taught me two things. All these about like eat bacon and eggs every day. Yeah. And he's like, no, fewer knots the better. <laughs> you were born in Texas. Uh, that's right. That's right. And you can tell that I didn't miss any meals either. <laughs> uh. Fun times, guys. All right. Well, I'm seeing it's already one o'clock. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna save the rest for the next Hackle Tuesday. What should we do? We, should we switch up? Maybe go live bait or do a shrimp, uh, a sh- shrimp tackle Tuesday. Everything shrimp. Yeah, I might have some. Te- I'll, I'll do some. Uh, I'll get that that live target and do some tests with that and some other spent uh, shrimp baits. One one lure. I'm curious on the DOA shrimp versus like this live target shrimp and then the do uh, the gulp shrimp. Trifecta. Live, live target if you guys are just joining now we're going to be testing this out tomorrow hopefully this live target <laughs> shrimp called the fleeing shrimp and it looks crazy real big question is does it work who knows and we'll try we'll try real shrimp doa shrimp fleeing shrimp gulp shrimp bubba gub shrimp how many different shrimps can you name? Yes, yeah, so maybe we do a shrimp and let us know. Uh, He-Man shrimp. Jeremy Kennedy says, gulp all day. Yeah, uh, I love me some gulp shrimp. Bad news is, you know, you got to carry around either a container of a live juice or keep it in the packet. Can't keep it on your uh, jig head very long. I've, I've got to just protect it like a, like a prison guard with Otis on the boat. Whatever's oh, yeah. in that gulp juice, he goes cra- He will cannot handle it. And like not it, all but, dogs like it. It's it's usually ones with Otis who are a little yeah. bit, a couple screws yeah. loose. But speaking speaking of Otis, this morning I went out for a, I walked him and uh, he, he took took a poop and there's something in there. It was off color. I was like, what the heck is that? I looked down. It's a slam shady. He's taking <laughs> he got not one, three of them, three that's slam shadies. That's why I got to bring you a hundred pack every like other, <laughs> other week. So he got in. They're all he got into my uh, my slam shady graveyard and uh, had a, apparently had a field day in there stinking dog that's hilarious this whole time i just thought you were fishing three times a day <laughs> which you are you guys don't know luke now lives in the water and gets to fish every single day because he's got a little button apparently this button you can hit and it plops your boat right there in the water and you go fishing I, w- I wish it was every day i'm trying i'm trying but again yeah these lure tests so yeah please do you know submit lure ideas um because we're here we're here to test we can test them out so you don't have to spend your money and, and learn the hard way that's what we're here for uh, I love testing new things. So yeah, send us emails or comment on our posts or even in these things. And, uh, and we'll be sure to take note of it and get them out there and see how they work. Yeah. And you'll notice a whole lot more different lure reviews. Now that we have uh, Southeastern as a, as a partner there where Mark is right now, uh, we have access to a lot of tackle. I mean, thousands and thousands of thousands of different pieces of, of, of equipment and tackle and gear. So we'll, you'll see a lot of, of, unboxing and a lot of you know how how to rig and how to use and just overall our, our feelings on it and then of course as insider members you get 20 percent off all that tackle and one thing that we do that's a little bit unique to the insiders is we do a whole lot more side by sides where you know we'll actually just completely unbiased where it's just a private video because like if you watch our youtube videos i don't know we've got i don't know 115,000 subscribers and oh let's just say it's 600 or 700 videos on the insider side we have like double the amount, not of subscribers, because it's it's uh, you know it's all private. But in terms of videos, there's well over a thousand videos that the public can't even see inside of the Insider Club, and a lot of those are these comparisons, rods, reels, and it's just completely unbiased. Like we'll even say this thing absolutely stinks. Don't ever buy it, and, and here's why. Uh, it's where we get really brutally honest um, and, and doing the side by side stuff. So one more reason to join us in the Insider Club, and of course the twenty percent off of all your tackle. And that's one reason Mark is there is uh, man, just doing some inventory management. That's been so tough. So thank you guys who are insider members and or public. You can certainly go to our shop page and buy, even if you're a public 
of course, the insider members get 20% off, but uh, we were pleasantly overwhelmed with how many orders came in. I mean, it was tens of thousands of dollars came in like super, super fast. And now we're like, we're going as hard as we can to get as much inventory uh, back in stock. So thank you guys for the patience and for all of the support. And if you want to check out to see what we have there, if you see it on our page and it doesn't say sold out, that means we got it, including Slam Shady. Uh, that's shop.saltstrong.com. And to join us in the Insider Club, you can go to saltstrong.com uh, or saltstrong.com slash pricing. Uh, you'll see it right there at the top of saltstrong.com. Otherwise, yeah, next week, let us know. Uh, I think some kind of live bait, because we haven't done that in a while, or some kind of shrimp. We could do artificial shrimp, live shrimp. Those could be two different separate ones. Uh, there's so much we could talk about on, uh, on shrimp. So let us know. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you want us to do. We'll keep doing these Tackle Tuesdays as long as you guys participate and like them. And, of course, if you're listening on the blog page, we have this video is, uh, as well. So, Mark, Wyatt, Lukey, thank you, guys. Good times. It's been really yeah, fun yeah. hanging out with you virtually. Tackle Tuesday. Oh, snap, cracker pop. All right, guys, we out. Peace. Until next week. See everybody. Do it. See you, bud.